Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's time for us to start our week of gratitude. So I thought I'd do some Agile gratitude posts for the whole week. And I'm going to kick off today with why I am grateful for the Agile Manifesto. More specifically, why I'm grateful for the 12 supporting principles of the Agile Manifesto. It's obvious why we're grateful for the Manifesto. The Manifesto has become the mantra for so many organizations. And so many people have it memorized and they know exactly what's going on with it. But, you know, I think part of this is memorization sometimes kills what you learn from it, right? If you don't put meaning into what you're memorizing, you're not going to learn it. So I think part of it is, you know, do you know the Agile Manifesto by heart? Can you say it verbatim? Many people say yes, some people say no, and it's not bad if you don't know. It's not good if you do, right, necessarily. It's do you live by, can, have you created a story that supports what you're trying to do? And, and do you understand what you're trying to do? So let's just refresh. In 2001, 17 Agile enthusiasts met to talk, ski, relax, eat, and find good drink, right? They wanted to talk about common ground and uncover better ways of developing software. So they created the ever so famous Manifesto for Agile Software Development. We are uncovering and discovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Uh, customer collabor- or Working software for comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration of a contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. Yes, I have it memorized, <laughs> right? But I'm not saying that that means you should. I think you need to focus on some of the keywords, right? So if you pull it out and you look at just the keywords... Some of the things they talk about is people, right? They talk about individuals, interactions, customer collaboration, understanding how these people work together. They talk about product, working software, and responding to change. Find ways to incorporate that into your story, into who you are and what you do. And I'm grateful that they use those words because I think that when you understand who the key players are and you understand what the product is, it's going to help you have an agreement to focus more on the people and the product than you do on the other surrounding artifacts. And I think that's awesome. And it's a great way to start. So in every good story, there's always some type of plot. The plot thickens and there's conflicts. And yes, Agile came about because of conflicts. Uh, If you notice, there are values on the left versus values on the right in the manifesto. The ones on the right are the pitfalls, processes and tools, contract negotiation, comprehensive documentation, following a plan, how evil, right? You know, it's just, you know, it's just, it's an awful way to end your day, right? But I think that if we don't have it memorized, we should at least be able to think of those inconceivable problem keywords. I don't even think you know what that word means. Uh, talking about process, when I talk about processes and tools and contract negotiation, documentation, talking about comprehensive documentation or following a comprehensive plan, right? I want to point out that it's not saying those are bad things. It's just saying that they can become problematic if they're too heavyweight and burdensome. Agile's aim is for less documentation and following more of a lean flow, right? And I think that once you understand that, then you can lean in because here's the deal. I think most people misunderstood the first part. So the the writers, the, the creators of the Agile Manifesto had to instill 12 Agile principles in order to help you be successful because people weren't internalizing the principles alone with just the manifesto. So they needed something more. So the second chapter of the story uh, involves us developing products and services, in this case, software that revolves around people and how they do work. So software literally literally is created for people by people, right? So it's for the people and by the people. So it's one of these things where we have to really dig in and understand that Agile solves the overarching problem about the customer being a priority versus the team being a priority versus the business being a priority by focusing on collaboration and interactions. And I think that if you understand that collaboration and interaction are the keys to being successful, that this is going to help move the plot along. And in the uh, the 12 principles, it talks about it's uh, principle number, I want to say four, business people and developers or business people and technical folks must work together daily throughout a project. 
Uh, I know that one there. And I think it's number two, our, high, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer early and often through continuous delivery of valuable products and services. Don't ask me why I have these 12 memorized, but I do, <laughs> right? It's just, these are really interesting to me because I think that if you understand where these came from, working together daily, satisfying the customer, some of the agile practices that support that are daily meetings like the daily stand-up or scrum, uh, a product demo to the client where we can gather feedback and then we can reciprocate and we can uh, learn more about what's going on and create the feedback loop. I think in order to satisfy a, a customer, whether it's internal or external, early and often, we need to frequently collaborate with them. We need to frequently engage, right? And I think that's something that we often miss out on. We shouldn't be making assumptions. We should fully understand what their expectations are. We should clarify as the project goes on, and we should move forward so that we can make sure we're aware. I think behind the scenes, we also have to understand that there are software engineers. Why do I bring that up? Because... Agile is different in a sense because it actually gives attention to people. And these people tend to work really hard to meet irrational demands where overworking is common. They have no personal life. They're usually not very social. And oftentimes they get burnt out pretty easy. And I think that in the principles, it points out that we build projects and teams around motivated individuals. We give them an environment, support that they need, and trust them to get the job done. The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organized teams. We're back there again. The most efficient, effective method of conveying information within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation, right? All these things that build support and trust, self-organization, face-to-face conversations. There's a lot of that in the manifesto and in the 12 principles that we often forget. Do we allow our teams to make decisions on their own? Do we allow them to self-organize? Does management support them and provide trust in a, in a safe workspace? Do we have face-to-face -face meetings, whether it's in the office or on Zoom? Uh, how are we doing our face-to-face -face meetings and are we, do, are we doing those? Are we taking part in those? I think that we need to understand that it takes a good client and a good team building a product or service to have success. You need, you need to have both. You can't just have one or the other, right? Okay, continuing down our story, we're almost there. A story is just words if it's, ever, if, if it's never published, right? So a lot of the conflict that I hear revolves around the process control and documentation. <laughs> so how do we balance that software on paper isn't what the client paid for? They want something that actually works, but yet we need to have paper in order to get to the point where we build something that works. So it's almost like the chicken and the egg thing again, right? But Agile easily resolves this conflict by talking about working software over comprehensive documentation. The key word there is comprehensive. If you have no documentation, you're not going to make it very far. Responding to change over following a plan. We all know there's two things certain about a plan, that it's a plan and it's going to change, but that's okay. As long as we understand that having something that's small and working is better than a thousand pages of what we intend to do. And as long as we understand that working software, working products and services are primary measure, measure of progress. Once again, one of the 12 principles. Agile promotes sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, users, everyone else should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. It shouldn't be burnout mode. Uh, my favorite one, number 10, simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. Uh, number one, we deliver working products and services frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with preference on a shorter time scale. I think the key words there are working products and services or working software, sustainable development, simplicity, delivering frequently. I think that if you understand those things, that that's going to help you get to where you need to be. And of course, doing minimal documentation, using team velocity to determine a steady pace, uh, frequent releases and demos to a client regularly, and practicing incremental development with, uh, with strict vertical slices. I think that that's going to help you be successful and assist in that collaboration and cross-pollination that you need. Finally, I think if you write the story, there's always a plot twist. There's always a change, right? And this isn't any different in software. But I think that software changes introduce risk. So you need to understand uh, and accept that this debate doesn't always go to the change control board. Or just, <laughs> you know, I think that how you respond to change is so critical and so important. And uh, they bring up change quite a bit in here. They talk about we welcome change and requirements even late in development. Agile harnesses change for the customer's competitive advantage. That makes sense. Continuous attention to technical excellence. 
and good design enhances agility or the ability to change. And at regular intervals, we reflect on becoming more effective and fine tune and adjust our behavior accordingly. We need to understand that as part of our maturity model, that the team's gonna have to cope with unknowns because they're not gonna know everything and that they're gonna have to reflect regularly and bring things into the light. So there's gonna be changing requirements. We need to focus on technical excellence and we need to do this through using team reflection. Once again, all crystal clear makes sense. I love this. So I think that you know if we focus as a team on organizing ourselves around solid principles and good foundations and, and building it out, you know, we're going to have success. The one big difference though, is that in a story, oftentimes we're talking about a fairy tale. It's not always a true story. And, you know, the agile manifesto, I heard a lot of times talk about, you know, a lot of organizations talk about, well, if we rode unicorns to work every day and, and I'm like, no, it's, it's not a unicorn scenario. It really is something that's doable. You just have to be imaginative in the way that you do it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, while it's important to dream up a story and to help you memorize and help you figure out why these things are important, you also have to understand that the plot comes with certain plot twists and that the Agile story really never ends, that it's a series or it's an epic. Uh, I went there. Uh, it's a set of novels, if you will, Te telenovas, telenovelas, <laughs> and it gives you and your team a chance to keep it going for some time. So there's no need to really memorize the principles as long as you remember how to incorporate it as part of your story. I'm grateful for the founders of Agile. I'm grateful for the people who took the time to write the Agile Manifesto and the 12 principles, and I hope you are too. Until tomorrow, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay Agile, my friends. Do take care.